Hello again, folks. It's your favorite accidental time traveler, Charlie, here. Since my last whirlwind trip through the space-time continuum, life's been as normal as it gets for a guy with a port for a colon. I've been laying low, trying to avoid any foods that might agitate the old time machine. You know, sticking to a diet that would make a rabbit yawn. But let's face it, a man can only eat so many salads before he starts questioning his life choices. And as for my social life, let's just say, trying to explain why you suddenly vanished from a bathroom stall doesn't make for great first date conversation. Sorry, I accidentally time traveled to the Wild West. You wouldn't believe the lack of plumbing they had. But hey, on the bright side, I'm getting a first-hand education in history. Who needs the History Channel when you've got a digestive system that doubles as a TARDIS? I'm like Doctor Who, if Doctor Who really needed to watch his fiber intake. So, with my luck teetering between hilariously unfortunate and please, not again, I brace myself for whatever my bowels have in store for me next. Strap in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Feeling a bit bold, or maybe it's just a lack of common sense. I decide to roll the dice on something other than my usual plate of rabbit food. I'm at this swanky new eatery, diving into a dish that's definitely not approved by the time traveler's diet guide. The food's a symphony of flavors, but with each bite I can't shake the feeling that I'm dancing on the edge of a temporal volcano. Picture this. I'm cruising down the road, almost home, and for once not breaking any speed limits. The last thing I need is a cop asking why I'm in such a hurry and having to explain. Well, officer, my bowels are a time machine. Last time, let's just say, I played a not-so-fun game of will he, won't he with the toilet, and lost. But this time, I'm in the clear. Heck, I even considered taking up Sudoku to make the most of my time-traveling toilet trips. Maybe learn a new language. Hola, donde está el baño? You know, practical stuff. Then, just as I'm thinking I'm home free, my bathroom starts doing the cha-cha. And whoosh! I'm whisked away through the annals of time, courtesy of a turd that's more reliable than a Swiss watch. Why does this keep happening? Beats me. Maybe my insides are just nostalgic. Or maybe they're just messing with me. Either way, it's like having a DeLorean in my digestive system. So there I am once again, thanks to the stubborn turd lodged in my bowels. It's like a really crappy superpower time-traveling turd. You'd think after all these trips I'd at least get frequent flyer miles, or a loyalty card. Congratulations, Charlie. You've earned a free trip to the Jurassic period. Watch out for the T-Rex. I mean, seriously, what's the deal? Is there some cosmic lottery where my bowels just keep hitting the jackpot? Congratulations, Charlie's colon. You've won another trip to who knows where. And every time, it's the same old routine. The world starts spinning, my stomach does somersaults, and I brace myself for wherever or whenever I end up. It's like throwing a dart at a history book. Will it be ancient Egypt? Roman Empire? The Roaring Twenties? The suspense is killing me. Well, not literally, but you get the idea. Suddenly, it's pitch black. I'm feeling this immense weight, and my first thought is, Great. I've time-traveled to the future and I'm floating in space. But then reality hits. You don't feel weight in space, genius. I take a deep breath and, oh, the horror. Cold steel is hugging my family jewels a little too closely. It's then I see a slit of light and realize I'm inside a suit of armor. Just my luck, right? Trapped in medieval tin can with my privates in a vice. I try to shift my leg. And yowza. That's when the real pain hits. I let out a scream that could wake the dead, sending the knight in front of me running for the hills. Probably thought I was a haunted suit of armor or something. So there I am, half naked, trapped in a suit of armor, trying to figure out how to escape without emasculating myself. I would have preferred to be the court jester, I think, wincing as I try to maneuver my way out of this medieval chastity belt. So here I am. Time traveled straight into what looks like the medieval era, and as my luck would have it, I find myself squeezed into a suit of armor, naked. Let me tell you, these things were not designed for commando operations. 
Every step is a symphony of pinches and pokes in places that, frankly, I'd rather not discuss. I'm waddling around like a tin can with attitude, thinking I'd rather be strutting down Main Street in my birthday suit than trapped in this medieval torture device. I mean, at least in the city, I'd have the option to duck into a Starbucks for cover. Just as I'm contemplating my life choices, I hear someone yelling, Hey, you there! What are you doing in my armor? I turn around, or at least I try to. It's more of a clunky pivot. The grace of a ballerina, I have not. Before I can say, Halt! Who goes there? I topple over. Down I go, like a majestic oak tree, if the tree was wrapped in metal and had an awkward sense of humor. There I am, lying on the ground, a knight in not-so-shining armor. This guy, presumably the owner of my impromptu outfit, rushes over and lifts my visor. He repeats his question, probably expecting a valiant knight, not a time-traveling nudist. As he's staring at me, I get the internal alert that this guy is my however-many-greats-grandfather. Perfect, I think. Just how I wanted to meet the family. When I don't respond, he goes on, You scared off my sparring partner, so you must have some skill. Then he looks down and gets an eyeful of more Charlie than anyone's asked for. Are you... naked in there? He asks, one eyebrow raised so high it could fly off his face. There I am, a naked time traveler in a suit of armor, flat on my back, meeting my ancestor. This isn't just a page in the history books. It's a blooper reel. Well, I start, trying to muster some dignity. This isn't exactly how I planned my day. Lying there, flat as a medieval pancake in a suit of armor, I look up at my ancestor and nod. Yes, I say. Because really, what else is there to say? Sorry, I'm just your future descendant dropping in via my digestive time machine? I don't think so. I'd really appreciate some help getting out of this, I managed to say, trying not to sound too desperate. It feels like parts of me are about to be snipped off, and I'm pretty attached to those parts. He calls over his squires, a couple of lads who look like they've just stepped out of a renaissance fair. They start disassembling the armor, and I've never been more grateful. Piece by piece, the metal comes off, and there I am in all my glory standing before a group of medieval bystanders. Public nudity is becoming a distressingly common theme in my time travels. Where am I exactly? I ask, trying to maintain whatever dignity one can muster while stark naked. The guy who's been eyeing me like I'm a museum exhibit responds, I am Lord Geoffrey of Montclair, in the year of our Lord 1433. He's looking at me as if expecting me to start juggling or recite poetry. I can't tell which. Lord Geoffrey then gives me a look that's a mix of curiosity and concern. Are you... well, in the head? He asks, probably wondering if I'm some sort of lost jester. Never better, I reply with a grin, deciding that if you can't beat history, you might as well join it. Just your average Joe enjoying a casual stroll through the centuries. I think, but don't say, rather. I assure you I'm not insane, I tell Lord Geoffrey, trying my best to look like a man who doesn't regularly time travel via bowel movements. But explain how I got into your armor? Let's just say it's a long story. He raises an eyebrow, clearly still waiting for an answer about my lack of attire. And your clothes? He presses. Thinking on my feet, or in my case, bare and on display, I blurt out, I was robbed. Yes, robbed. It's a dangerous world out there, you know. Lord Geoffrey looks skeptical but seems to buy it, probably filing it away as one of those weird things he'll recount at fancy dinners. He orders his squires to give the armor a thorough scrubbing and make sure to clean the inside really well, he adds with a shudder. Then, turning back to me, he commands, Bring this man some clothes. I'm standing there feeling like the main attraction at a medieval fashion show, just waiting for something, anything, to cover up with. Even though I'm standing in the 13th century, my mind drifts back to the beautiful woman from Salem. Despite her apparent role in nearly getting my ancestor toasted like a marshmallow, I can't shake the memory of that kiss. I scan the crowd, 
half expecting, half hoping to see her face. But no luck. It seems my mysterious lady isn't into time traveling as much as my bowels are. As I finally get clothed in something that screams medieval chic, which is a nice change from naked time traveler, I can't help but think about her words. You won't be able to save them all. What did she mean? And more importantly, how did she know my name? Lord Geoffrey, seemingly unfazed by my sudden appearance in his life, invites me back to his abode. As it turns out, his place is a castle that looks like it's straight out of a fairy tale, if the fairy tale involved awkward time travelers. I find myself on a horse for the first time, riding bareback. Let me tell you, it's an experience. Every bump is a reminder that I'm not cut out for medieval transport. It's like sitting on a jackhammer. A very hairy living jackhammer. We finally arrive at Lord Geoffrey's castle, and I'm introduced to Lady Eleanor of Woodbridge, his girlfriend. She's the kind of woman who looks like she stepped out of a medieval painting, poised, elegant, but unfortunately not causing my stomach to do its time travel tango. Puzzled by the lack of intestinal alerts, I spend the next few days indulging in medieval activities with Geoffrey. Jousting? Check. Feasting on what can only be described as mystery meat. Double check. As days pass with no sign of my time travel triggering ancestors, I start to worry. Maybe I'm stuck here, destined to become a footnote in a history book. Charlie, the mysterious man of the future who never pooped. Then, one day, through the castle gates comes a couple herding goats and hauling chickens. My stomach does its familiar rumble as I lay eyes on an older, haggard-looking woman on a wagon. Great, I think. Medieval matchmaking it is. But the thought of Lord Geoffrey, Mr. Chivalry himself, in a love triangle with this couple is more than my brain can handle. It's like trying to imagine your grandparents in a rap battle. Some things just aren't meant to be thought of. As the group passes, I catch sight of a young, beautiful girl in the back of the wagon, almost hidden behind cages and hay. Aha! The pieces start falling into place. My bowels aren't just alerting me to Geoffrey and the haggard woman. They're signaling all relatives involved. So now the question is, how do I get a lord to ditch his noble lady for a peasant girl? It's like trying to convince a cat to swim. But hey, I've faced down time-traveling turds. How hard can medieval matchmaking be? As I ponder this new challenge, I can't help but think, only in the life of Charlie. From toilet stalls to time-traveling matchmaker, it's all in a day's work for me. So there I am, Charlie the time-traveler turned Cupid, trying to plot a romance between Lord Geoffrey and a peasant girl. It's like trying to mix oil and water, only the oil is a noble lord and the water is... Well, a girl who probably doesn't even own a mirror. First things first, I need to get them in the same room. Or better yet, the same castle courtyard. I convince Lord Geoffrey to throw a grand feast. A feast for the common folk, I say. Boost morale. Show you're a man of the people. It's good PR, Jeff. Surprisingly, he buys it. A splendid idea, Charlie, he exclaims. Who knew medieval lords were such pushovers for public relations? The day of the feast arrives, and it's like a scene from ye old cookbook. Roasted meats, jugs of ale, and enough bread to build a small fort. The courtyard is buzzing with people, and in walks our peasant girl, looking like she just stepped out of a medieval shampoo commercial, if they had those back then. I've positioned Lord Geoffrey strategically by the well, a prime spot for accidental encounters. And as fate, and a bit of Charlie meddling, would have it, our peasant girl needs water. Their eyes meet, and there's that unmistakable spark. It's like watching two magnets get pulled together. I swoop in, playing the role of the enthusiastic friend. Lord Geoffrey, have you met... Uh, what's your name, miss? She's starstruck, or maybe just confused by my 21st century haircut. Isabella! she says, her voice as sweet as the mead being passed around. I make the introductions, throwing in comments about Geoffrey's love for the common people and Isabella's unparalleled goat-herding skills. You know, typical medieval icebreakers. 
As they start chatting, I'm patting myself on the back for my matchmaking skills when Lady Eleanor enters the scene. Uh-oh, I think. Didn't factor in the current girlfriend. But to my surprise, she's more interested in the roasted pig than the budding romance. Phew. Crisis averted. As I watch Lord Geoffrey and Isabella appear to hit it off, I can't help but feel like I've just pulled off the medieval version of The Bachelor. It's not every day you get to play matchmaker across centuries. Now the only question is, when will my time-traveling gut decide it's time to leave this love story behind? Only time and my unpredictable bowels will tell. Just as I'm watching Lord Geoffrey and Isabella not quite hitting it off, seriously, not even a spark, let alone a glowing belly, it dawns on me. This isn't working. My matchmaking skills are about as effective as a chocolate teapot. What more can I do? I wonder, feeling more out of place than a polar bear in the Sahara. Lost in thought, I head over to grab some ale to clear my head. That's when I see her. The mysterious woman from Salem's Bridge. How does she get around time like this? Does she have her own turbocharged bowels? I rush over, a mix of excitement and nerves. But as I get close, she snaps. You, you're not going to mess this up again. I've worked too hard. She will always be a peasant. Her words hit me like a slap in the face with a wet fish. Before I can even process her words, my stomach churns with the force of a thousand storms. It's not just a rumble. It's an earthquake. In a flash, I'm catapulted through time, landing with a thud on my toilet back home. The impact is so sudden that my bowels react like a tube of toothpaste under a steamroller. Sitting there on what's left of my toilet seat, I'm trying to piece together what just happened. Was she controlling my trips? Is she some sort of time-traveling puppet master? My head spinning faster than a cat chasing its tail. I wash my hands, splashing water on my face, trying to wake up from this bizarre dream. But as I look in the mirror, something's off. My face. It looks like mine, but not quite. Like someone used the change-a-bit tool on me. What in the name of Doctor Who is going on? Is this what she meant by, you can't save them all? Have my time-traveling antics finally caught up with me? Am I now a walking, talking paradox? How do I fix this? I ask my slightly altered reflection. The mystery woman's words echo in my head. I have to get back there. But how? The uncertainty is gnawing at me like a hungry hamster. As I stand there, a man out of time with a face not entirely his own, I realize this is bigger than just wayward bowel movements and historical hijinks. Something's changed, and I need to find out what. Well, folks, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the bathroom, life throws you a curveball. Or in my case, a faceball. Here I am, staring at a mirror that's decided to play a game of spot the difference with my face. I guess this is what happens when you meddle with time travel. One minute you're trying to play medieval matchmaker, and the next, you're wondering if you've accidentally become your own ancestor. It's like a bad episode of a sci-fi show, only with more toilets and less CGI. So, what's next for our slightly altered hero? Will I find my way back to Lord Jeffrey's time to untangle this mess? Will my face ever return to its original settings? And most importantly, will I ever enjoy a simple trip to the loo without fearing a jaunt to the Dark Ages? Stay tuned for the next thrilling and hopefully less face-altering episode of Charlie's Time Travel Troubles. Because let's face it, who needs a quiet life when you can have a time-traveling colon that keeps you guessing and occasionally changes your appearance? Until next time, keep your toilets close and your time machines closer. You never know when you might need one. Thanks for joining my bathroom turdesy. Drop a comment with your guess on where the next flush will take us and like and subscribe to keep them flowing.